Hello, my name's Gary Gronseth, and on behalf of my co-director, Don Smith, and the other faculty, I'd like to welcome you to the Evidence-Based Medicine online course. So the purpose of this course is to teach evidence-based medicine. Actually, its focus is on practical evidence-based medicine skills. This slide is the organization of the course. It consists of 10 core modules. These modules are designed to be taken in order 1 through 10. Each module has a common organization. So we will start with a clinical dilemma. We will ask you some questions related to that clinical dilemma. We will teach a practical evidence-based medicine skill during the course. And then at the end of the course, there will be a reinforcing post-test. So this is our dilemma. We're seeing a 62-year-old woman who was found to have a left carotid brewery by her family medicine physician. He ordered a carotid duplex, and she was found to have a high-grade carotid stenosis of the left carotid artery. He's wondering, should this patient get an endarterectomy or other procedure, such as a stent, to try to treat this stenosis? So based on this information, what would you most likely recommend? Please indicate that, carotid endarterectomy or stenting or medical therapy alone. So some possible justifications that you will likely hear and maybe even submitted are listed here. These types of justifications, though on the surface, they seem to be relevant and pertinent to the dilemma. As you'll see, and as you probably already have guessed, they're really not all that helpful. So this brings us to why evidence-based medicine. So when we're faced with a difficult question, we often, quite unconsciously and naturally, substitute an easier question. So the problem with this question substitution is that the easy question often leads to a fallacious answer. And this really gets us to the start of the evidence-based process, which is indicated on this slide. So developing and formatting evidence-answerable questions is not as easy as it might first seem. But even writing the relevant question itself isn't a trivial process. It can be assisted by using a very structured format known as PICO, and it stands for four critical elements of an evidence-answerable question. So now, I want you to write a therapeutic question that's relevant to our carotid stenosis dilemma, the clinical dilemma that we started with. So put that core question into a PICO format. So here is my formulation of our question in a PICO format. Yours should be substantially similar to this. 